The summer I was 15, I had this job guiding tours at a historic mansion in my town. It was a really memorable experience, and one of the things that I look back on about it was my frequent encounters with a tortoise shell cat named Sweetie Pie. So Sweetie Pie was kind of the mansion ambassador. Everybody in the town could see her on the grounds when you would go for a walk in the garden outside, and she would also greet guests inside of the home. And she had this really kind of spirited personality where one moment she would want to interact with you and then the next she wasn't having any of it and she was very expressive and communicative about her boundaries. And I think this was really my first encounter with what is uh, affectionately referred to as tortitude. This idea that our tortoise shell cats, cats with this combination of orange and black fur, have a distinctively spirited, feisty, independent personality. So all of these years later, I wanted to take a deeper look at tortoise shell cats, finding out whether or not tortitude is real, and if so, why? And also uncovering some other interesting facts about tortoise shell cats. I spent some time researching tortoise shell cats, and I also put out a request for you, uh, viewers of the channel, to submit your photos of your tortoise shell kitties. So I'll be sharing some of those photos and videos that you submitted uh, as the video goes along. With that said, let's get on into some facts about tortoiseshell cats. So first off, what is a tortoiseshell cat? Visually, you can identify a tortoiseshell cat as any cat with a combination of black and orange in their coat. Some tortoise shells will also have patches of white, and these can be referred to as calicos in the United States or in the United Kingdom, just tortoiseshell with white. To understand how this happens genetically, you need to know that there are two main pigments that can color a cat's coat. One is eumelanin, which causes black variant colors, and the other is pheomelanin, which causes orange variant colors, or non-black. And in all cats besides tortoise shells, one of these dominates over the other. But in tortoise shell cats, a process called X-linked inactivation or lionization causes these uh, chromosomes to deactivate randomly, seemingly across the body. So you'll end up with sections of the body that are presenting the gene that causes orange pigmentation and then sections on the body that are presenting the gene that causes black coloration. Again, there are modifiers that come in to determine exactly how that coat looks, but basically the result is that you end up getting this kind of patchwork of colors across the body. Interestingly, X-linked inactivation happens in humans as well, and while we don't end up having kind of patchy colored hair because of it, there are some interesting conditions that can arise from X-linked inactivation. For instance, there's a condition called anhydrotic ectodermal dysplasia, which affects ectodermal tissues, including the skin and the sweat glands, and people who have it will end up having this kind of patchwork of skin where some of their skin produces sweat normally, and then other parts of the skin uh, have reduced sweat production. And so that's kind of similar to the black and the orange sections all across the body of a tortoise shell cat. Because two X chromosomes are required to make a tortoise shell cat, the vast majority of tortoise shells are females. The only situation in which you get a male tortoise shell cat is in the rare case of an additional copy of the X chromosome where the cat will have X, X, and Y chromosomes. This is a condition that is referred to in humans as uh, XXY syndrome, simply XXY, or Kleinefelter syndrome, which is accompanied by other issues in the person's body, including generally fertility problems. So male tortoiseshell cats make up only about one in every 3,000 tortoiseshell cats. They're very rare. So you can pretty confidently say that whenever you see a tortoiseshell or a calico cat, that is a female cat. Tortoiseshell cats can come in many, many different colorations and patterns. So again, I asked for some examples of tortoiseshell cats and got some really nice pictures of different uh, tortoiseshell types. So for instance, you can see that Tulip here is a dilute tortoiseshell cat. Um, she has a dilution gene that causes the black sections to look more gray or almost brownish and the orange sections to look more cream. Many tortoise shells also have a gene that causes white spotting or piebalding, which is when there are patches of unpigmented skin on the body. And so these cats will be again referred to as calicos here in the United States and uh, in the United Kingdom, for instance, they will be referred to as just tortoise shell with white. So fundamentally, this is a tortoise shell cat. Interestingly, the more white you have on the body, the more 
patchy the orange and black sections will look. They kind of have more room to spread because there aren't other pigments kind of holding them in. And so you get more patchiness versus that kind of brindled look to the pigment patches. The gene that causes a cat to be solid doesn't really work when you have the orange gene as well. And so all of those orange sections will have some tabby patterning. The black sections usually will as well, but they can also sometimes be solid. And so you'll get this combination of solid sections and tabby sections in some tortoiseshell cats. Others will have a complete full body tabby pattern. And a tortoiseshell cat with this really pronounced tabby patterning is referred to as a torby. Yuki here is a good example of what would be described as a calibi. There's a lot of white on the body as well as the tabby patterning. My next interesting fact is that you cannot clone a tortoiseshell cat. That X inactivation that causes the cat's coat to have this kind of variegated look occurs very early in the embryo's development. The cells that are used in order to clone a cat come from an adult cat. And so each of those cells already has undergone the X inactivation and it will either be an orange cell or a black cell. So if you try to clone a tortoise shell cat, you will end up with either black or orange kittens, not both. And even if it was possible to clone that tortoise shell cat, the X inactivation seems to be random to the point that we wouldn't be able to reproduce the unique pattern of the original cat you're trying to clone. And then when it comes to the natural reproduction of tortoise shell cats, this will involve either a tortoise shell cat and a black cat or a tortoise shell cat and an orange cat or an orange cat and a black cat. It makes sense. Um, but if you have two orange cats or two black cats, those two will not create a tortoiseshell baby. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what color parents your tortoiseshell cat may have had if you don't already know. And lastly, I wanted to circle back to the big question that might be on your mind, which is, is tortitude real? So the jury is still out, so to speak, on this. Um, we don't know exactly if tortitude is real, but there is some pretty good evidence that there is some sort of personality difference between tortoiseshell cats and cats of other colors. So there was one study that was kind of interesting. They looked at over 1,200 cat owners and they surveyed them on the behaviors of their various cats. And instead of asking the owners to use descriptive terms like intolerant or unfriendly, they asked them to report the instances of certain behaviors like swatting or hissing or anything else. And what they found is that the tortoiseshell cats did seem to react in these more temperamental ways. So they were reporting more swatting, more hissing, uh, more biting from the tortoiseshell cats compared to cats of other colors. Some other cats were higher up there as well. It wasn't just the tortoiseshells, but it did seem that they were reporting more of these behaviors in the torties. This isn't the only place where we've seen that tortoiseshell cats are reported to be a little bit more temperamental than other cats. I've even heard of veterinarians who have different expectations when they hear that a tortoiseshell cat is coming in for a checkup or any other veterinary care, but why? It seems the most promising theory has to do with the fact that by and large, tortoiseshell cats are female. And we've observed that female cats tend to behave differently in more natural settings, in cat colonies, for instance, and that there are some observed personality differences or behavioral differences uh, between female and male cats. And given that those female cat traits tend to be similar to those we're observing in tortoiseshell cats, it kind of adds up. Now, there's another piece to this puzzle, which is the way that we raise our cats. Cats are very sensitive to how they're socialized early in life. So if we get a kitten and we have assumptions about how a tortoiseshell kitten is going to be, we could influence the way that they develop later on in life. So socialization is a huge part of a cat's personality and demeanor and the way they interact with the world. And I think tortoiseshell cats, like any other cat, are influenced by a combination of upbringing, their genetic background, their parents, their breed, a host of other factors come together to create the cat that is in your home today. So whether they're tortoise shell or orange or any other color, there are so many different factors coming together to shape their unique personality. So there's no one single 
tortoise shell personality. And if you have one, I'm sure you know about this. And even though the words that are associated with the idea of tortitude might sound negative, in my conversations with people who have tortoise shell cats, it's really clear to me that this is kind of a term of endearment. People really like this kind of feisty personality. It's something that we appreciate. I think it's an extension of what makes cats so fun to be around in the first place, which is that they have these boundaries and they have these ways of communicating with us. And part of the fun is coming to understand your cat and learning to respect them and engage with them on their terms. And it seems like tortoiseshell cats have even more to teach us about that than cats of other colors. Now, as for my friend Sweetie Pie, I called up the mansion and found out that she had died just last year. She was 20 years old and had many years at the mansion greeting guests and interacting with them, but always on her terms. A great example of a tortoiseshell cat.